is uh, you see that we are studying yoga sutra oh here is an i was you got vaccination i see you are moving lips i don't hear you yeah okay i said i got lots of poison into my body okay that is good Let's put the in it. Yeah, it's a good poison. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> so you see that what we were talking that uh, we are studying Yoga Sutra. So study of Yoga Sutra is like uh, you are studying, you can say PhD. and we have because you all are great seekers so why to study the basic text but normally <laughs> the journey starts first with the basic text which gives you the definition of the terms used in our eastern wisdom like we use the mind so we have a clear understanding of the mind we use consciousness and then we use three bodies treya sharira so that is the beginning after learning the basic terms then we study a lot of concepts and analogies so what are the concepts of eastern wisdom then the third group of the text where we study there what is the system what is the organized method what is the practice what is what do you mean by liberation what do you mean by awakening and then we study then comes the yoga sutra so it is at a much higher level and after studying the yoga sutra then we study the ultimate text which is known as upanishads uh, there are 108 upanishads so come back to our topic now uh, some people have noted down so last week we studies what we studies shraddha viryam smriti samadhi pragya purvak itaresham shraddha so if we need if we have shraddha the faith huh if we have faith and we explain and understood what exactly is the faith shraddha then viryam so viryam is energy enthusiasm sincerity and right memory in every study uh, we keep that right memory about where we have gone what are the challenges and we remember these simple principles also and plus our experiences so shraddha viryam smriti and uh, shraddha viryam smriti uh, samadhi so means regular practice with the wisdom otherwise we forget unless we we are perfect we have a driving license we need to continue the practice and the uh, fifth one is pragya 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 uh, it has two syllables means a uh, simple meaning is uh, discernment and and uh, uh, discretion now see that we as a human being have the what we say that our level of self awareness is is much higher as compared to other animals uh, i have seen lot of pets you know moving around you during the meditation i hope they are also doing the meditation and provided if they do it you have to send me the check <laughs> <laughs> no cheating yes so now see that there is a big difference between our level of self awareness they are also intelligent no doubt 
uh, you tease them, you guide them, say hello. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have tail to express our love. So they have the tails also to express their love. Oh no, what is the basic difference? That tells us about the fifth uh, quality that we have. Fifth quality, fifth trait of the self-awareness. If we don't have that, forget about yoga, meditation, etc. We don't. Then what we do in the name of yoga? Then we are walking on our hands, headstand pose, headstand pose, etc., etc. Uh, so we have all those. Now, just understand the difference between the difference between the uh, self-awareness in animals and take an example of a dog and the cat. You, re you know it. I am just reminding you. When the dog faces the mirror, what happens? That dog claims that there is another dog in the mirror. And they are ready to fight or swing their tails to be friendly with them. So I was looking at the videos and I saw that German Shepherd was looking into the mirror and they barked. And then the German Shepherd went behind the mirror to find out where is my friend. Uh, you know it. We don't do it. We are 100% sure that we see the image, see the level of self-awareness. This is one difference. Huh? This is one difference. Clear? So why I am explaining you this? We should know, otherwise there is no meaning of this example. <laughs> you see that when we are stressed and anxious, that is only an image and we get stressed. We, our level of self-awareness drops down. Did you get it? As the dog starts barking in the mirror, seeing his own image, considering that that guy is different, so let me find out, we become totally different when we are stressed and angry and agitated. Honey, I love you. And the next moment, we become totally different. Done. Done. And then we see that image of being anger is real to me. Real to me. In anxiety, in stress, in duality, in conflict. Very good. In duality and conflict. Here it goes. Huh? So now, now understand what we are taking. So, if you have these five traits almost at 100% equal in quantity and quality, this is another sutra. So, Master says, Tirva Samvega Nam Asana. What he says, if you have 100% of these traits, that attitude in you, success in meditation will take place hardly in a week. Then you will say, I am joining you again to have a more clarity. Otherwise, I have succeeded in meditation. This is what the master says. You see the systematic study? Huh? In the previous week, what we have studied that they are God-gifted. They are born seekers. Last week, we understood there are five traits. So in this way, 
here the master says if you have these five qualities hundred percent in quality and quantity success is just in a few days so we had need to understand we need to remember so what are these five traits it is basically an attitude towards life nothing more than that attitude towards life day-to-day -to -day living it is not that you sit with eyes closed and close the room and then you uh, cultivate these qualities shraddha faith faith will not come when you close the room and when you open the room the shraddha faith is gone it is it is an awareness it is my attitude do you see that it is your attitude shraddha same way the memory you don't forget your name you don't forget your gender Oh, there are people who forget. We are not talking of those people. So, do you see that? It is our attitude. Attitude here and now. So, when you have that attitude with these five traits, success is always there. But why? Why the master is saying this happens? So, Shraddha means holding on in the field of awareness that knowledge of the real self all the time that real self is permanent peace and happiness so then what happens for women a handsome person like john appears before them so there is a change in the mind why because the mind perceives falsely the happiness is outside. For us, you know, if we see the beautiful women. So for that seeker, because he is holding on the real self, or she is holding on the real self in the mind, no problem. No influence. No problem. Now see the opposite. Someone becomes anxious, angry over you, reactive, and you withdraw your mind inside. Okay, I'm with my real self. You continue to be angry. 100% attitude. Attitude. Now your search is of happiness is not outside because it is inside. So the mind lives inside 24 by 7. Now see one factor Michelle was saying, today I am tired. How many times you are tired every week? <laughs> so, this is one major cause of challenges that takes place in the body. You live into that state, that attitude, and that energy is not scattered outside through the mind. You live into it may be any professional, social, lot of. These two examples doesn't fit totally here. So mind, you know, get obsessed with something. Sometimes the mind get obsessed with your, even the body. Sometimes it get obsessed with the thing in the office, in the workplace. So it, what master is saying, tir vasam vegana masanna, 100%. Do you want to succeed? 100% of these five traits, which converts into my attitude towards life. Right memory. Same thing, energy and enthusiasm. Sometime I feel when I start talking, I have Sunday's session for about three hours, continuously. So after one hour, I see my energy level goes up. Normally, people's energy level goes down. <laughs> so when I tease two hours, then now energy level is 50% more. Three hours, it is almost 80% more. That is required. So remember these five traits. 
five trades. I give you another example so that it makes you uh, understand. I know all are my friends, you know. I, I'm not a guru, so I don't feel that you are my students, but for the sake of understanding. So I had one uh, friend in India, very good, wonderful man, millionaire. So I'm not naming that so, so that, you know, it remains private confidential in america we have huh, we have privacy so one beautiful woman couple of months ago she told me everything about her personal professional life within five minutes because she was in the mode of anxiety and then when i started because i thought that she is talking to me because she needs some guidance so the moment I start talking, no, you are interfering in my privacy. Come on. Come on. So sometime, you know, I have to face a lot of things. I know that. There is nothing as such as privacy anyhow. So this friend, so what was his problem? He was a very good uh, student of mine for at least five or six years and he was taking care of all my financial needs in India without saying anything. So what happened that whenever he used to go to the mall and whenever he used to see any women, he used to freeze down. Freeze means his body used to stop and his eyes got wide open and he continued. And he used to come to me crying, you know, you know, today my wife, you know, said that this is, you have a big problem. You don't love me. Now just go opposite of this. I will stop this example here. The moment you wake up in the morning, you live with those five traits. You have a perfect attitude. You will succeed in meditation. So anyhow, that friend, you know, I... Uh, he learnt a lot of things and ultimately he got rid of the problem. So the mind sometimes get too much obsessed, habituated, like the dog I gave an example in the beginning. <laughs> Low level of self-awareness. I got stuck. Why I got stuck? Because the mind, because of its past memories in the habit, is, is seeking that pleasure and happiness. So we need to have 100%. So this master says, think of this. Do I have that attitude of holding on? him? Do I remember? Yes. Right memories? Yes. Energy is there? Yes. Oh, I see that real self is only one inside. I live into that state of dispassion. So what happens? What exactly happens in the mind? I can promise you, if you live into that attitude, 100%, even for one hour, you will find that you are living in a different world, as if you have a sense of freedom. You have a tremendous energy. Calmness and peace is already there. That is why he name these five attitudes. Now see how the mind changes by listening and the talking. The quiet, you know. The quiet, I think, you know, that's the right word to use. Who kills people for the selfishness. Ah, the quiet. So Buddha was walking in the forest where he met a decoit. He used to snatch all the belongings, those who walked into the forest, and cut one finger after killing that guy, and used to put as a garland. His name is very famous. His name is Anguli Mal. Anguli means finger. Mal, garland. So when he saw Buddha, 
He thundered, O oh man, are you not scared of me? Buddha said, no. That is what happens if you have these five attitudes, five traits in you. But Buddha was at that time enlightened. Buddha smiled and responded, why should I be frightened of you? We both are human beings. The poet said, because I steal everything and kill people. Now see what happens to you. I didn't what happens to you? What happens to us if the guy, someone, some guy says, I will, you know, I steal everything and I kill people. What happens to us? But when you live with these five traits, Buddha said, why you kill people? He did not say you will kill me. We get upset because the mind remains outside. We are not holding on to the truth. Are you getting it? If I'm holding on to the real self, that is the state of the fearlessness. So Buddha said, asked, why you kill people? Because I need money to help my family. Now see, this is what happens by listening to these principles. So Buddha asked, I think you know, killing people, you accumulate a lot of sins. Does any of your family is ready to accept the sins you are committing for them? Quite said, I never thought about it. So Buddha said, go to your home. I'll wait for you until you return and ask your family if they are ready to accept the sins you commit. So he went to his family, but everyone refused. His wife, his son, daughter with whom he had an intense attachment to accept. They are not ready to accept the sins. That is why I normally sometimes say that take the word lightly. You're near and dear once lightly in the sense that mind is free from attachment. <laughs> we had a long conversation, I and Anne, sometime, some weeks ago. Take the, our near and dear ones lightly without any attachment. Are you getting it? So ultimately that decoy returned and he said, you know, he started crying. Nobody is ready to commit sin and I have killed thousands of people. He became one of the great masters in Buddhist tradition. This is what the attitude is. So think of it. Do I live into that attitude? So Patanjali, our great master, says, Tirva Samvega Namasana. In the goal is achieved when the seeker has an intensity. Intensity to follow the practice. Means he is an intense seeker. She is an intense seeker. Means... When you have that intensity of seeking your own self to succeed in meditation, you become almost equal to those seekers who became great masters, who did not make any effort with these five traits. They were born gifted seekers. This is what the master is comparing. Normally what we say, oh, he is Buddha, you know, I am an ordinary fellow. That is why the master is, Patanjali is saying, I can also become Buddha. That is the message. Name of the Buddha is famous because, you know, we feel as if he left the kingdom and he became a monk it means that is a very great sacrifice. What is that meaning? That my mind still gives a lot of importance to that possessions, to that wealth. When I think in that way, then I don't have that attitude. Are you getting it? There is a Rumi of India. His name is Kabir. He born, he was born in a very humble family, poor family. He was a weaver. He remained as a weaver. Not many people know him. So you see, 
the society feels great. Oh, he was a king, he was a prince and he left the kingdom. Kabir was not less than the Buddha. Are you getting it? Mind is, mind is more attracted outside. That is why I, I, my mind feels and declares, oh, Buddha was a great monk. How can the, no, I, I'm not criticizing. It is just an analogy to understand the journey. Buddha has to spend six years in extreme austerity before he achieved enlightenment. So as compared to the God-gifted seekers who are born seekers like Vivekananda, he completed his work at the age of 37-38. Buddha continued to live until the age of 89-90 years. He got awakened at the age of maybe 49 or 59. I don't remember now. But it, till then, the Vivekananda has completed his work. He came to U.S., he taught, he contributed 200 books, he showed the path and people are still learning what he taught. Are you getting it? So think of it and contemplate Remember all this attitude. It's all about attitude. Forget about the traits. First think of the faith. You need not to practice faith. When you practice faith, you destroy it. So faith actually means my mind is aware, holding on the way your mind is holding or your name, your gender, your place of your home, everything the same way you hold one more thing. And my real nature is peace and happiness. Simple. Why? You don't give a place to your anxiety, duality, conflict. See that? Then you can continue to smile. Otherwise, I check, you know, within a few minutes, a smile disappears. <laughs> it disappears from your face. Why it disappears? Do you remember the proverb? Face is the index of mind. <laughs> so mind returns on your face. Do you see that? Attitude. Just think of that attitude. And then right memory attitude. I am pure consciousness. Huh? And huh, that energy level. Energy, enthusiasm is to find myself is much more than much more than seeking pleasures outside and supported by discernment. I gave an example of discernment. Dog, discernment is wrong. And our discernment, if it gets wrong, we lose that awareness, then the meditation will not succeed. I will bring an end to this uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda. First understand what he ex defines yoga. Yoga is a process or a method of compressing one's evolution in a single year, few months, few hours, of earthly existence. So what it means? Meditation is nothing. You compress your evolution. Why you compress? Why you need to compress your evolution? Ah, if you are going by the will whims of the nature, then we continue to suffer. We don't realize that here in this event there is no suffering, there is no pain. Because the mind is moving outside, it is attached, it causes the pain and the suffering. You know, all those divorce and other stuff, fighting and the crime, all comes from because of this. So what um, Vivekanan says, once you learn this science of Eastern wisdom, that it includes yoga and meditation, you are compressing your evolution depending on your intensity. What is that? You have 100% of these five traits. 
and attitude. Then what will happen? Few hours of earthly existence. You learn from beer guy like me and you accelerate your evolution much faster than I did. You are done. Okay, I got it. Otherwise, if you have less of those qualities in and quantity, then few instead of few hours, it is few weeks. You have still less than few months. You have still less than few years. You have none of them. Then thank God, because you don't have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should thank God. Why to enter into this such a crazy business? See that. That is how the entire journey is rightly understood. If you understand it clearly, then you contemplate and reflect. That helps us to accelerate our process of evolution. So let us start our journey of meditation. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And uh, now see, check. You have all these five traits. When I say close your eyes, the body is comfortable and the mind is not attached and identifying with the body. You, how you can be tired? You are pure consciousness. You know that right memory returns. No way. And your mind is looking deep inside. Where it is looking? Inside the head. Inside the heart. Head or the heart. It keeps looking inside the heart. So what is the point of keep looking inside the heart? You have Shraddha, the first attitude. The mind instantly reminds, oh, the real self is inside. Journey of meditation is moving inside. And then the mind, because of the past impression, complains of the body, but the mind says, no, come on, come here. You see? I'm just, you know, we are understanding how these five traits helps you to live into that intense seeking. And now see, we, we respect mind and we respect the body. <clears throat> Torture, torturing the body is not the way of Eastern wisdom. Now you look at the neck joint. So the moment you look at the neck joint, the mind says, okay, I feel the sensation, I'm comfortable, and I am steady. And the mind then sits deeper inside, instead of mind returning outside. What that means? You have a right memory. You have that energy. All the five uh, traits convert into that attitude. No problem, I'm there. Go ahead. You see that you give me a green signal. That is the way to become an intense seeker. So you look at the shoulder joints, you feel the sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. Hip joint, sensation, comfortable and steadiness. So now see if the body feels tired, no issue. So you look at the breath and we have done many a times. You are looking at the breath. Keep your focus inside the chest or the rib case and start breathing quick and fast, gentle, short, quick, fast breathing as if it's a playful breath. Playful breathing. Continue my friends. Continue, my friends. Continue. More tired we need to do it. Let us do it for two minutes today.
Continue until you start feeling some changes inside the head and it's normal. So in that, it means it is happening inside the inside your head. So mind will remain inside and we are already supplying little more oxygen to the brain. So nothing, a big deal. And stop it, do nothing for a few seconds, become aware of the changes. We feel some different sensations, so let us become aware instead of getting carried away by those sensations. When you get carried away by those sensations, what is that meaning? The mind is working like our dear pet who is looking into the mirror. No, you are looking deeper inside. So that is how, you know, I always like to personalize and customize even these practices in a group. So even still you are feeling little, mind is still obsessed with the body, no issue. Take a deep, silent, slow breathing. First into the belly, then into the rib case. Keep your focus inside the forehead and start doing the humming sound ten times. Remember, you need not to breathe the noisy breath. Why? So that you are able to maintain your self-awareness. Inhalation should be totally silent, deep. And exhalation is full of humming as loud as possible. Mm.
This is the last time of the humming. Leave it. Let the breath be continue to be deep, silent and slow. In the next stage, we will continue to do the nyasa. As you inhale, move the mind inside the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips in the space inside with the singing and listening oh, mentally. You are singing mentally and you are listening to it. Oh. When you exhale, move the mind from the fingertips to the shoulder. You need not to breathe extra deeper so that the mind doesn't like it. And you should not leave it so that the mind may feel dozing off. So you balance that. Continue. Deep, silent, slow breath. One point of awareness. Second point. Mind goes with the breath. Third point, the mind moves in the space inside. Third point, fourth point, you are singing mentally. Om. With the breath, fifth point, you are listening to it. That will help the mind to live into that attitude created by the five four traits required to be a seeker. Now move the mind inside the left arm. And you will start finding as if you are going too far from the body. That is the key to deeper relaxation. Now you all are seekers, so we are understanding our experiences with reference to the attitude of a seeker. So continue, inhale deep. You will almost, the mind will say, body is as it is, let it be. I'm already inside. That attitude happens and that attitude gives you a deeper experience of tingling, numbness, body freezes relaxation, stillness, lot of other experiences. So we live into that experience. So that also tells us, yes, progress is there. So now move the mind and the breath inside the right leg. From the right side of the waist, to the toes inside, singing and listening mentally. You know why listening mentally? So the mind doesn't listen to the other thoughts that enters into the mind. singing, om listening. This is what makes us a human being, the self-awareness. I just explain in a very uh, common man's language. Now inside the left leg,
beautiful we appreciate Now inside the spine, from the crown of the head to the tailbone, and from the tailbone to the crown of the head. You know, I explained to you before also, you know, I'm expanding the understanding of only the three words that we, that helps us to succeed in meditation. Moving within who mind living within and awakening within now all these formulas and the principles are an expansion of these three phrases Now, moving the mind from the crown of the head to the belly button, so you have a liberty to slow down, shorten the breath, so as if you are dropping OM from the crown of the head during inhalation to the belly button, singing and listening, OM, you lifting, you are lifting the mind, Mind rises with every exhalation from the belly button and again you, as if the OM appears on the crown of the head. You see, when the mind continues to live with even deep with the deep, silent, slow breath, and then the mind continues to follow us. It doesn't create any tantrum. It doesn't run after any thought. That is what uh, happens when we move the mind from the crown of the head to the belly button, which is a center of action. You have done before. Beautiful. I appreciate you all, especially those I'm looking. You know, even you may have some ideas, some thoughts, you know, past impression. No, 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 I am tired. I'm, no, I'm real. My mind is real. No, 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 leave it as it is. Continue the journey. So that makes you clear. This is the way. This is the right memory. I need to progress in that way. If I persist, with awareness and energy, you know, I can leave the crazy movement of the mind. And now, moving the mind from the crown of the head to the heart within. So, from the heart within to the crown of the head. Om. So, even your breath becomes little more short.
And now leave that deeper breath. Let the breath flow naturally. The moment the breath goes in and drop home inside the forehead and the moment the breath returns, goes out, drop the home and the crown of the head from the forehead inside to the crown of the head. You need not to worry about the third eye. There are more than 300 centers on the forehead. So any point you can pick up. Because if you start making an effort, oh, I have to focus on the third eye. Oh, no, I miss it. I have to do it. No. Any point in the forehead will do. Normally people start making some mistake about it when they don't have that clarity. Now, do nothing, remain as it is. The concluding step in meditation, I always say, do nothing. Why? Doing nothing means the mind is not a doer. When that is not a doer, then what happens? Then the knowledge of the reality reveals in the state of meditation. Get it. Doing nothing doesn't mean that you do not, you are not aware. All variety of experiences descends into the body and the mind. Huh? So we become aware of those experiences. And that builds us the right memory, which helps us in exhalating our revolution according to Vivekananda. Um, shanti, 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 Today's recitation deepens the practice. That's why every teacher do it traditionally. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 So we return in a specific way and then we'll share our experiences. Bring your hands, bring your mind on the right hand, 
your mind on the left hand lift your both the palms place it on your eyes open the eyes inside wait there with eyes open inside the palms and know your experiences bring the hands down how are you sophie Hi, I'm good, thank you. I think my mind was a little bit lazy uh, today, um, but uh, I definitely feel very calm. Very and, calm. Uh, very good. Very good, yeah. that's calmness. I will not ask John, You rem or perhaps you remain calm all the time. I see the smile on the John's face. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> so, no problem. How about you, Mead? Uh, I I feel grateful <laughs> and peaceful. Oh, the possibility of peaceful. That's wonderful, me. That's a good, oh. very good expression. <laughs> Oh. How are you, John? Don't tell me anything about okay. Sophie, you know. It's a privacy issues, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In America, we have many privacy issues. Right. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I find that the breathing and singing exercises require more concentration, and as a result, that leads to more awareness. And that in turn, leads to uh, my mind focusing on that and not other things, not extraneous things. And that's a good thing. That's a very good expression. You see that you are doing it mentally, on singing and listening also. So when you are singing and listening, Om, the mind says, listen to these thoughts, but you are listening, Om. These thoughts are going away. We are not fighting with the thoughts. Understand this. But we are not forcing the mind. The moment you force the mind, you destroy meditation. Did any of the traits explained by Patanjali includes focus and concentration? No. See that? It goes behind what brings a natural focus. If we follow these five traits. Then it becomes my attitude. Right. Keep smiling. How are you, Michelle? <laughs> so I think I'm like Sophie. I had somewhat of a lazy mind, but during the um, meditation part, I was able to focus some of my energy on, you know, my leg, and it actually stopped hurting. So, yeah, okay. yeah. That's really good. Think of it, Michelle, constantly, you know, even during the working, nobody is asking you not to think of these good traits. Oh, am I holding yeah. on my mind to that piece, that real self which I have yet to discover? Do I have the right memory? Yes, yes. So you, even if you start thinking, the mind will change its habit, its attitude. So very good. How are you, Anne? No worries. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I feel good and calm. Good. This morning I was very nervous. Uh. <laughs> and I feel good and peaceful good and peaceful head very heavy <laughs> oh the head very heavy yeah that may be uh, because of that poison it could be <laughs> could be so <laughs> ask any question that you like to ask yes yeah, sophie no yes so uh, before when we did practice is it called nyasa nyasa 
the um, deep breathing mind is moving with the breath and singing and listening om right so when we were uh, actually singing om but not attaching it to the breath i found that extremely difficult to do i, I could not because mm -hmm. we've been doing om with the breath so much so to switch it to detach it from the breath was very difficult so i was wondering whether you you would have um <laughs> Yes, 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 that's a good question. Like a hint about that. That's a good question. You see, a simple answer is that mind does not want to go inside. It wants to remain attached and identified with the breath and then the body, then the sense organs, then the objects of the sense organs. So that is one. So one thing that by regular practice, when the mind one day sits within, it leaves the breath, it says, I'm free. I can go with the breath, I cannot. Even I leave the breath and still the mind continues to move that. You see that you, uh, um, uh, Sophie, you look from my barred center of the head to my last hair. You need not to use the breath. You can see it and you can move up and down in a natural state. So in a natural state, the same thing, there is another way to do, to, to progress and accelerate the process that any time you are sitting in a room and in front of the wall and you see the four, uh, the square or the rectangular wall. So you do nothing, you just pick up the position of the head and start moving your eyes from right to left and then going down to the second corner of the wall, then the uh, ground and then going up. This is one way. So the more and more we do it naturally, it will or pick up any object which has a geometrical design. So we say the triangle, which is equilateral triangle, facing in upward has a tremendous power. It changes the mental consciousness. So you see that like this triangle? So you can draw it and you can just move the mind, move your eyes clockwise. And a couple of times, maybe five minutes of clockwise movement, five minutes of anti-clockwise movement. And you will find the breath continues its own path. The body becomes totally steady. That's a very powerful way of Tantra practice. And has done mentally that triangle practice long back, perhaps in 2010 or 11. She knows, she remembers but this. <laughs> I put it on my ceiling. Ceiling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she used to put, she used to draw that triangle and she used to put it on the ceiling. She did it lot, lot, lot of practices. So, any more question? Remember that five traits. So, when you live with these five traits, attitude changes. Attitude, you see that those five traits, when I look at the image of my master, oh my goodness, I am filled with the love, what he did to this crazy guy. So you see that? That attitude. It's only about the attitude. It's simply an image. So we use we use this as a device to change our mindset. That is all. John, now you can check your email with that state of calmness. <laughs> Any more questions? That is all. So, thank you very much. Keep smiling. Be happy. <laughs> 
you have given me a big namaste, Michelle. Thank you very much. You know. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah.